Hi, so a little while ago I uploaded a video about how to give your projector a zoom feature um, without having to shell out uh, the extra money for that feature. It's a very simple DIY fix, check out my other video on that. Uh, there you can see it if you're familiar with what it looks like from the other video. Um, so I'm just going to demonstrate that feature in action, so I'm going to hit the lights now. So this is uh, just a, a holiday photo actually, because um, YouTube won't allow uh, you know, content from other providers without copyright infringement. So um, just got a couple of home photos. So this is the kind of 4 by 3 mode. If I move this on, you should be able to see this. Move to a, here we go, 16 by 9 um, Now the 16 by 9 image you can see here uh, still fits quite nicely in between uh, the speakers, which you can see here. And there's one over here. Also fits nicely in the kind of height of the room. So 4x3 to 16x9 are uh, both fine. Actually, no need to use the zoom function there. If I move this on again, now this is a, a photo again, just a holiday photo that I've cropped to a kind of 2.4 to 1 aspect ratio. That's what you might get with the kind of um, uh, you, you big Hollywood uh, widescreen films. Um, now at this point, you can actually uh, zoom out a bit. So bear with me while I do this, Toronto is one-handed. Moving the projector back, just straighten it up a little bit. Okay, now we've got a nice straight 2.4 to 1 image, which is quite a lot bigger. Um, at this full size is about 120 inches. Uh, with a 16 by 9 you can get something like 130 inch diagonal uh, screen size, so this is plenty big, and that worked fine. And you know, I was a little bit worried that you might have to kind of refocus every time you do this. But actually, the distance that we're moving here is about what, 20 centimeters. Um, and with this projector, at least with this setup, with this sort of short throw, um, it actually doesn't make any difference to the, the the sharpness of the screen. So you don't need to refocus. If I come in here, you can see, you know, you know pixel wise, this is actually perfectly sharp. So that works pretty well. And there's a couple of other things I'd like to show you about this so you can make your own home cinema and uh, try and uh, you know, learn from the things that I learned too. So Zoom works really well, definitely recommend that. Uh, this projector costs less than £500 um, and now it's you know got features that you find in models of twice that price. Um, the You might have noticed these LED strips up here, all the way around the room. This is one of the, the kind of best things I bought for this cinema, I think, because you don't need your ceiling lights on when you've got this great LED light, um, and it's ridiculously cheap as well. So in here, I've just got a kind of strip of LEDs. I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's the kind of cheap strips you get off eBay. You find them everywhere. Um, this is like uh, 15 meters worth of LED strip. Um, the whole thing, including this corner thing, which uh, you see, just install with a little gap at the top. Um, cost maybe sort of hundred pounds, something like that. Uh, it's really easy to install. Get the polystyrene corner thing. You'll never know the difference between that uh, and the more expensive um, plaster corner thing. Uh, really good value for money. Um, the LEDs themselves did actually break a few times. Uh, the ones that I bought, um, they're not the most reliable. Um, but I found that out before I installed it and the eBay seller was uh, really helpful and just sent a, a load more. I think they sent me like seven more boxes um, <laughs> because they know there's a quality problem. Um, but you know, it still works out really inexpensive. Um, just also to mention the, the ceiling. So I started off with a white ceiling. You can see now I've painted that almost black. So it's not completely black, um, but it makes a huge difference to the, uh, the sort of light spill uh, and the, the, the black levels that you can get on the screen especially in a room like this. So we're in the in the cellar now, this is the basement. Uh, there are no windows in here, so there's absolutely no lights, but if I kill all the lights, you, the only thing lighting the room is the light that's reflecting off the screen. Um, so yeah, it's uh, definitely worth uh, painting the ceiling black uh, if you've got the option to do that, it makes a huge difference. Um, just to say the, uh, the lights, so yeah, I, so I've left this light bulb in here because it's not that close to the screen. Going close to the screen, I've just taken the bulbs out. Um, I do have these on a, on a dimmer switch, but even so, even when I dim them, uh, if these light bulbs are in, you get quite a bit of spill onto the screen. So 
uh, y you might want to uh, consider just taking out lights altogether from from the kind of screen area. On the other hand, it's useful to have that option there because you know in the future this can be like a playroom or, or a gym or whatever you want, and you've got the lights here, so you don't have a kind of strange dark corner at this side of the room. Uh, what else have we got here? So uh, the junction boxes. Yeah, I just mentioned this junction box I bought off eBay. So here's the the kind of hi-fi setup down here. And here's the junction box for all the uh, the hidden wires. Um, now you can just get uh, the wires to interface into the wall through a kind of brush box. Um, I bought this swanky looking box off eBay. It was a bit of a waste of money to be honest because you, you can't see it down there. Um, you get a just as good a, a, a light kind of, uh, you get a just as good a fit with a uh, just a hole in the wall, um, you know, you're not, you're not going to see it. Similarly with the speakers, uh, there's no need for the junctions here. By the time you add up the cost, it might have been like 50 quid or something. A um, bit, bit of a waste of money, to be honest. Um, also, just to mention, so I was a bit worried about this feature, which you haven't seen. So here is kind of the other wall, except it's not a wall, it's a set of sliding doors so if you open up here it's actually a utility kind of room or cupboard uh, at this side of the cinema now that might look a bit weird um, but you know whatever you need to do to persuade uh, your whole family that you know the cinema room isn't a bad idea um, you know can be worth it there's some great storage on the left too this is a really practical feature it's probably not something that uh, you see every day in the cinema room, of course, but uh, look, when these doors are closed, when that light's off, uh, and when these lights are off and you're looking at the screen, you totally forget it's there. Uh, it's not a problem at all. Uh, it doesn't interfere uh, with the kind of you know, the viewing pleasure in the room for me. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, just to mention the Cyclone Mini. So this is what I'm using to project the image, is this, uh, this is a remote control. And here's this tiny little cyclone mini box down here. Uh, this is this is the best uh, buy you can. I think it's the best spend of forty pounds or something like that that you, that you can spend. Um, you know, you get it, it plays everything. Uh, it's basically flawless. Uh, it's definitely worth the money. And I've got this hooked up with the. Uh, you know, with the plug socket based uh, internet. So you get a nice fast uh, connection on there, no Wi-Fi dropout. Uh, similarly, I'm just using the BT box here. Um, I don't have a game system down here. I'm not really into gaming, but uh, obviously you could hook that up to this nicely. And just to mention these speakers, so you might have been looking at this speaker thinking, you know, that is a, that is a small speaker. And that is, I mean, that is the size of your hand, it's tiny. Um, what's the sound like? It's actually not bad. It's actually really quite good. This is the uh, Boston Acoustics, I think. I forget the name. Um, I didn't spend a huge amount of money on this system. Yeah, there's the sub. Um, you know, to be honest, you, you know, you can spend a hell of a lot more money. I think this is about £200 is set up for these uh, speakers. Um, the amplifier down here, this is about £110 or something like that from Richer Sounds. Uh, this is the Sony STR-DH550. Look, this is all I need this is all you need I think um, for you know, most people you can't really crank this anyway because even though I've put the sound insulation in the ceiling here there's actually you know the whole uh, whole set of sound insulation the sound trap will travel especially from the sub the sound will travel upstairs um, it doesn't really matter what you do with the sound insulation it just does unless you want to spend you know, a, a lot more money than I spent on it um, so you know you don't get to crank it and with this kind of, uh, you know, the subwoofer, that's plenty of bass. These speakers sound uh, just fine to me. You know, you, you get the you get the, the surround impression. Um, so yeah, that's the the setup. Um, this is what I've you know learnt in doing it. Uh, top tips again would be black ceiling, absolutely a must. Uh, go with the dark paint on the walls, absolutely. LED is really cheap. This zoom system works really really well uh, definitely recommend that uh, and yeah so hope you uh, found that useful and good luck making your home cinema